he in fact said that upon the completion of the actions that were agreed between the government of Uganda and the Ministry of Finance, shall then all the development partners decide collectively on the way forward. And until that happens, the EU will not open the taps for direct budget support. The European Union stand follows a recent meeting between President Museveni and the EU Ambassador Roberto Ridolfi on the manner in which the government is progressively handling the recent corruption scandals in the office of the Prime Minister. But as Ugandans continue to feel the pinch of the budget funding suspension, different government agencies have returned to the drawing board to tighten the news against corruption. The Minister of Finance has already embarked on establishing robust financial management systems following the recent infiltration of the previous system by those who are involved in the opium corruption scandal. So government decided and said, look, we need to keep vigilant. At any one time in the process, we need to make sure that we keep checking the systems. They are not uh, templates that will remain permanent, but these are systems that must be upgraded. So that, uh, and the checks in the systems should be enhanced. So that at one point, no single payment can be made without one, two, three, four other parties, you know, being aware. Recently, the Bank of Uganda also put a cap on the amount of money to be withdrawn from the cash counter, previously 20 million shillings per day to 20 million shillings per month. But despite these measures, anti-corruption activist Sisi Kagaba insists that once the donors lift the ban, money shouldn't be passed through government but rather other alternatives should be explored. So we need to think, what are those services that these particular donors want to give to particular people under NUSAF? And isn't there a way? Is there only one way that has to be only through government? Have they ventured into other ways to see how the intended beneficiaries can get these services without necessarily going through government? I believe that there are various ways that they can you know, venture into. She's also advocating that the beneficiary communities be informed about the different projects to be implemented in their area. Donor agencies are also working with grassroots people. So they could come up with modalities of ensuring that the grassroots people, that these projects are supposed to benefit, are given information and they're able to monitor through this information. But as long as they give the monies and the grassroots don't even know what is entitled to them, they won't be in a position to monitor, they won't be in a position to hold the government accountable. Yet some members of parliament insist that the money needs to be channeled direct to the districts as opposed to going through the prime minister's office. Uh uh, they, can, they can send the money to the district after coming with the MOU with the district so that the district implement that, those programs themselves. But what remains unclear is how far these measures can go in fighting corruption in light of the changing faces and forms of embezzlement of government funds. Solomon Seruanja, NTV.